Go with me to Psalms 23, where we started in that last Sunday. Psalms 23. Last Sunday we we talked about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's talking about uh, about the Lord is. He's not the Lord was my shepherd. The Lord is. Which brings it up to an everyday thing. The Lord is my shepherd. Each and every day that we live, he is our shepherd. He's not was our shepherd or could be our shepherd, but he is our shepherd. And again, we bring out that he, that David, who was a shepherd boy, he's no longer the shepherd. Now he's the sheep. He's a sheep, and Jesus is the shepherd. So we, we see all this, and we talk about in verse 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now it's he and me. We brought that out last Sunday. It's he and me. Nobody else is involved except he and me. It is a talking about a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe everybody born again, I believe everybody born into this old world ought to have a personal relationship with with the Lord Jesus Christ. I think he should be the shepherd of all of our lives, don't you? And it's, it's sad that that people can't see the error of their life and get saved. I, I, I can't understand that. I've shared the gospel with people. I've talked to, to thousands of people in my ministry and I've seen hundreds of them saved. Don't I don't get don't take that for granted. But there are some of those who just turn it away, and they have no real reason why they reject the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Now I want you to notice that when we when we look at Psalms, the 23rd Psalm, verses two and three, that Jesus it talks about. He says in verse 2, He maketh me lie down in green pastures. In other words, He furnishes my nourishment. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That simply means that He provides us, or the shepherd provides the sheep with what nourishment they need. And that's exactly what Jesus does for us as our shepherd. He provides that nourishment that we need. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He's talking about, he's talk, when he talks about the, the green pastures, he's talking about uh, rest. It's a picture of rest. And uh, we all need rest, don't we? And it's a picture of refreshments. We need refreshment. Refreshment. It's a picture of the Word of God. Now I want you to notice verse two, the last part of verse two. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He furnishes my, or he provides for my nourishment. But when he talks about leading me beside the still waters, he's talking about my hydration. My hydration. Now, sheep needs water. You know, they're, they're every bone, every bone in their, uh, part of their body needs water. And so, uh, and I think it's, it's importance of hydration 
uh, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Sheep, now, and I, I told you this before, and I'm going to tell you to you again. Sheep did not drink from moomy streams. Sheep cannot swim, and they don't like moving water, and they won't drink water that's moving. They won't drink from that. So what the shepherd has to do, he has to provide a source of water, but it has to be still water, and water that's clean, but it's still. It's not running, but it's still. And uh, they'll drink from that, but they won't drink from water that's moving. Every cell, every cell. Now, I, 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 don't, I don't know a whole lot about sheep or being a shepherd except for what I read. And every, every cell of the sheep's body has to have water. It has to have that water. Now, it's true of all of us, aren't it? We all need water. And, uh, and it's important that we keep hydrated. <clears throat> and so we need water, too. Hydra dehydration, dehydration is one of the worst things that can happen to you. And it's the worst thing that can happen to a sheep is to be dehydrated. And and I've had a, I've had a problem with it as well. It just it just seems to drain your system, and you can you can have all sorts of problems if you don't have that hydration that the body craves or the body's got to have. When we get thirsty, it indicates when we get thirsty, it indicates that we need water. But our problem is we want to settle our thirst for something else. Besides water, and but the wa body needs water, and if you don't get it, then it becomes dehydrated, and you got all kinds of problems that pop up with it. Then, now, I, I believe that that our soul, I believe that the soul of man needs hydration. Not just my body, but my soul needs to be. Hydrated. It don't need dehydration. It needs to be hydrated. It needs it needs water. And like that sheep, we have a tendency to go to the still waters, and or we go to, uh, not still waters, but water that's moving. We seem we have a tendency to go to that. We think well, water that's moving is fresh water, and that's our thinking, and that's the water we drink from. And, but Clear pools of water was provided by the shepherd for his sheep. But the mud, but uh, you go to a mud hole, it may have water in it, but it's got mud in it as well. It's filthy. Listen to me. Listen to me. We as Christians need to drink of the Word of God. We need to be hydrated by the Word of God. We don't need the filth of this world. Am I right? We don't need to be drinking from the filth of this old world. And uh, this, the, the polluted, the stagnant mud holes of this old world, we don't need water like that, or we don't need to uh, get involved in something like that. Many of God's people are drinking of the streams of this old world. And listen to me. You can be religious. You can be religious, but there's no water there. You can have all kinds of academics, but you'll not find any water there. You can get all involved in the world's amusements. You can be amused by baseball games. You can be amused by uh, basketball games and all kinds of sports. You can be a, uh, amused by parks. You can be amused by the, by the, the movies and all that kind of stuff. But listen to me, you will not find any water in any of it because only the water that this soul needs has to come from the Word of God. Amen? And so we need to be hydrated, don't we? We don't need to be dehydrated. And uh, what 
for a sheep for a sheep to go without water it may not it may not affect the sheep immediately but in time it's going to affect that sheep if you don't get that water listen you can go without water for a little bit but not very long and 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 to be high, to de be dehydrated is going to not affect your body immediately, but down the road in a, in a period of time, it is going to cause you to be dehydrated, and it's going to create all kinds of problems in your life. I'm trying to I'm trying to get you to understand this that as Christians we need to be hydrated and the only high way a high, our soul can be hydrated is through the word of God. Amen. And through the person of the Holy Spirit. So what we see there is that we like sheep. Now Jesus is our shepherd and we're sheep. Now, you may not want to think of yourself as a sheep, but that's what you are. You're his sheep. Amen? If you're saved and born again, you belong to him. You've been bought with a price, and, and you don't belong to yourself. So many Christians who have been drinking of this old world's water, listen to me. There, there's, there is just about a time bomb inside them. And it, when longer that goes without water then that time bomb eventually is going to explode and cause you real, real problems. And it's the same thing with sheep. And, and they and that, they got to have that water. Their little bodies have got to have that water. Every cell of that body needs water, and every cell of our body needs water. And listen to me, every cell of our soul needs water and has to come from the Word of God. Amen? And all that kind of stuff. Now, when we look at that thing, there's two things about water. Two things about water. Now, I don't know if you ever thought about it or not. We need water for cleansing. Amen? We need water for cleansing. That's a picture of the Word of God. For cleansing, you have to read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 26. And that's the Word of God. That's we need the water for cleansing. Cleansing for what? Cleansing from sin. To be cleansed from sin. We've got to do what the Word of God has to say about that. So there's water for cleansing, but there's also water for drinking. I got up this morning, and I had, I had got me a bottle of water and drunk that whole thing. And uh, my body was craving it. I could have got something else or this and that or juice or something like that, but my body was craving water. And the only way I could satisfy what my body was craving is to use water. So I got a drink of, uh, of water. But the wonderful thing is, the wonderful thing is that the Lord who is my shepherd he provides me with that water that my soul needs. That's the Word of God. Amen? So that my, the Word of God is there for our cleansing, and the Word of God is there for our drinking. That's a picture of the Holy Spirit. Water for cleansing is the Word of God, and the water for drinking is the Holy Spirit. Now, in order to be saved, you need both. You need the Word of God, and you need the Spirit of God. Can I say this to you? You're never going to be saved apart from the Word of God. And you're never going to be saved apart from the leading of the Holy Spirit. And, and what we need, what our soul needs, is that we need this here, uh, this hydration. He gives me the refreshing presence of the Holy Spirit. I like that. I like that. When I think about that, and uh, it, it's good, it's good for the the sheep to get water. It's good. It's good for them. It's good for the Christian. It's good for the Christian to have the Holy Ghost living in him, that he can get the water that the soul needs from him. Amen. 
And so don't ever, don't ever underestimate that. We ought to begin each day, each day that we live, each day that we get up in the morning, we ought to begin each day by yielding our lives to the Holy Spirit. Let him be in control of our life. And if he's in control of our life, he's not going to mislead us and, or misdirect us, but he's going to know the way in which we need to go, and we need to allow him to lead us each day that we begin our life. Listen to me. When you get up in the morning, if you've got a uh, bed post on your bed, he's camped right there, the devil. He's camped right there because he, he's wanting to mislead you through the day, but aren't you glad you get up and yield your life to the Holy Ghost and he can lead you the right way and the right path that you ought to. We also begin each day by yielding our lives to the Holy Spirit. Every day, every day of our lives, we should say, Holy Spirit, here is my life and I yield it to your control. Fill my life today. Now, what's wrong with a prayer like that? There's not a thing wrong with it. And it's just, just the, what we need to understand. It's, it's he and me. And the Bible tells me there in verse 2, in the last part of verse 2, <clears throat> he maketh me to lie down in green places. Look here. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads me, but he leads me beside the still waters. Now, when the right kind of water that you need, it's, a, it's, a, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit that lives in you that leads you to the right kind of water. You don't want to drink from the, from the streams of this old world. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to cater to, to what the world has to offer. And, and because, listen to me, this world is getting more and more anti-godly than I've ever seen it. Amen? Uh, it's just it's just pitiful what's going on in the world today. So he provides me with nutrition. That's the green pastures. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He provides me with nutrition, but he also provides me with hydration, and that's the sweet Holy Spirit that lives within us. I want you to notice verse 3. He restoreth my soul. He, talking about the shepherd who is the Lord Jesus Christ, he restoreth my soul. That's what he says in verse 3. He restoreth my soul. You know what that word restoreth mean? To restore means to turn back. When God restores your soul, he's turning you back. He's turning you around. Am I right? You, and it means to turn back again. You know what? And you won't admit it, but we got to, we got to be honest with ourselves that sometimes we as Christians want to stray. Like that sheep wants to stray. And we want to stray away from God. We don't want to go the way God wants us to go. But we want to go in the opposite direction that God wants to lead us. And but what's got to happen is, is just like the sheep that the sheep strays from the fold, it's the shepherd that has to go out and find that sheep and bring him back into the fold. Turn him around. Turn him around again. That's the same problem with us. We want to go this way when God wants us to go that way. But what the God who is our shepherd has to do, he's got to come and find us and restore us. That means to turn us around and put us back in the fold where we belong. Amen? And, and, and he restores my soul. He and me. He and me. This whole thing, this whole thing is personal. It's not congregational, and it's not, it's not a committee, but it's just you and God. And this to me, the best prayer time you can ever have when there's just you and God. Nobody else but you and God. Go out in the woods somewhere, find you an old stump, and make an altar out of that stump. Or go out and find you a rock to sit on, make an altar out of that rock. It's me 
it's he and me and nobody else, and, and it's he that restores my soul. Why is it he that has to restore my soul? Because nobody else can restore your soul. Amen. When you get backslidden, when you get out of the will of God, who do you cry to? You don't cry to your preacher. You don't cry to some other Christian. You cry to God. You ask God to restore you back to where you ought to be. And that's the reason we get in the mess that we get in is because we're wanting to go in the direction we want to go in. We don't want to go in the direction God wants us to go in. And it takes him to restore our soul. Sheep. They have that tendency to stray. Here they are. I can just picture this. Here's the flock. And here's this little sheep. And he goes over here and he nibbles a little bit here. Then he nibbles a little bit out there. And then he nibbles a little bit out there. And pretty soon he has strayed away from the flock because he was nibbling. <laughs> we, we as Christians, us sheep here, we're like that. We want to nibble a little bit of the world. We want to nibble a little bit more of the world. We want to go over here and nibble some of the world. And pretty soon, we've strayed away from God. And it's God who has to come and find us. Amen? Because we don't know the way back to him. And, and and sometimes it can happen to sheep. Now what they, I'm going to try to explain this to you. I want you to understand it. Sometimes when sheep nibble a little bit this way and then a little bit nibble a little bit over here, uh, nibble a little bit over here, they get away from the flock. And here's what's happened now. After they have eaten, sheep want to lay down. But the problem is when they stray, they, 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 they develop a, a case of what they call cast, C-A-S-T. And what happens is when they lay down after eating, they have a tendency to roll over. And then if they're, and if they're not careful, they roll over on their back. You know sheep, when they get on their back, can't get up. They can't, they can't walk. They can flop their legs all they want to, but they can't right themselves. And what happens is they're there, and they're at the mercy of the buzzards. They're at the mercy of the wolves and the bears. And it takes the shepherd to ride him on the right side. And we as Christians, after we stray from the flock, we want to nibble a little bit of the world here and nibble a little bit of the world over here and get a little bit of nibble over here. We have a tendency to get on our back to where we can't turn over. And what it is, is it's the Lord, it's the, our shepherd, the Lord Jesus, that in the person of the sweet Holy Spirit, he is the one that has to find us and ride us to where we can stand up on our own two feet. He restoreth my soul. He not only makes me lie down in green pastures, but he restoreth my soul. Aren't you glad that he is your shepherd? Aren't you glad that you're his sheep and you got somebody that takes care of you and watches over you? Now, what happens to the people of God as well happens to that sheep. Now, I know you're sitting here and you have strayed away from God. Now, you didn't mean to, but you did. Now, a little sheep can stray. He don't mean to, but he does. And you may backslide. You may get out of the will of God. And you may, and again, you may not mean, mean to do that, but you did. 
and what happens is somebody you get out there and you get out you get cast c a s t on your back and you can't turn over you can't get back up and you're at the at the mercy of the wolves and the bears and you're at the mercy of the buzzards in the world today and it takes the Lord Jesus to come and find you and to restore you back into the flock well you sheep Sheep is the dumbest animal in the world. A sheep cannot find its way back home. I don't care. I don't care where it, it gets. He can get away from the gate. He can get out of the flock, and the gate can be open. He can get away from the gate. You know what? They are so dumb. They are more geographical morons. They cannot find their way back to that gate. And that's why the shepherd has to go hunt them. And that's why the shepherd is the one who has to restore them. And listen to me. When you stray away from God, it's God who has to restore you and not the preacher and not the church. Am I right? And I believe whenever a Christian gets away from God and they want to get back to where God wants them to be, I believe they ought to get in the front of a church and they ought to confess it and ask for forgiveness. That's the biblical way. That's the biblical way. And there has to be that repentance. I know a lot of preachers today, they don't preach repentance. They don't believe in repentance. But I do. The Bible says unless you repent, you're going to perish. And it's just as simple as that. Whether you like it or not, that's what the Bible says. And if you don't like what the Bible says, take it up with God. Don't take it up with me. Just taking, I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible teaches. I've studied this Bible for so many years. I've been through it up and down. I try to, I try to rest on every word. And if I don't know the meaning of the word, I look it up. I want to know what it means. But see, we get away from God. And you may be here today. You may be here today. Now, you, you really, you didn't mean to stray from God, but you've gotten away from the Lord. You don't exactly know what happened, but one day you woke up and found yourself far, far away from the Lord. You're just not near the Lord as you ought to be. Am I telling you the truth? People in churches who used to teach Sunday school. People who used to teach Sunday school, they're not even in church anymore. Something wrong, right? There's people who used to sing in the choir. They're not in church anymore. They need to get back in church. They didn't mean to, but now they're cast, C-A-S-T. They're out, of the, out there, and they're helpless. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to get back in, into the fold of God. They don't know how to get back in fellowship with God. I can tell you exactly how you get back in fellowship with God. You repent. You ask for forgiveness. And you know what? God will forgive. The people in the church may not forgive you, but God will forgive you. Amen? And it's just as simple as that. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Who's doing all this? The shepherd? He, and that's him up there. The more, I read this, the more wool a sheep has, it is, it's easier for him to get cast. I don't know if you can say amen to that or not, if you don't know what sheep is, is what I'm talking about. <laughs> But listen to me. I believe the more spiritual a Christian is, it's easier for him to get cast than somebody else. You know what? 
when you become so spiritual that you know more than God, you're in trouble. You can go out there and get cast and simply get where you can't get back in, get, get back up. You can't walk for God no more like you used to. And you were real spiritual, but now you need help. And it's him who has to restore the soul. Am I right? He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. I praise God. Listen to me. Here's a preacher that wants to just stand here and praise the Lord for his goodness and his kindness to me. I've been saved 53 years, and I've tried to live for the Lord. I preach, I've been preaching for about 40-some years. And I, I, I just I get to where I think that I know it all, and then I find out that I'm as dumb as I always was. And I need the Lord. Amen. I don't need it myself. I can't do it myself. I need the Lord. I'm not as smart as I used to be. I'm not as smart as I think I am. And a lot of you think you're smarter than what you really are. All right? You can throw books at me all you want to, but the whole thing is we all, we all think we're smarter than what people think actually think of us but the more serious sheep carry little ones now watch this and I'm going to close with this let's say a little a sheep and is pregnant with little ones it gets away from this flock it gets out there nibbles and nibbles and nibbles and then pretty soon it laying down and then all of a sudden it's turned over it's on its flock and them little ones it's just not the sheep that's at stake. It's the little ones that are at stake. Can I say something to you? We, we, when we have influence over little ones, we ought to be the best Christian that we can be that they can see. Amen? Amen. Amen. The best Christian that that little girl knows, it ought to be mommy. The best Christian that little boy knows ought to be daddy. Or it ought to be grandpa, or it ought to be grandma. I'm just simply saying, whenever you got kids involved in it, and you think about their, the influence that you want to be in their life, the best influence you can be is to point them to Jesus. Amen? And, and, and I, I, I just can't help. Uh, he restores my soul. He provides restoration. There's that shepherd. He knows the sheep is not where they ought to be. And I'm glad, listen to me, I'm glad that Jesus is my shepherd and he knows when, I, when I'm not where I ought to be. And I'm glad he comes to me and he restores my soul. Amen? I thought maybe I could finish this up, but I'll try to finish it up next Sunday. The Lord willing.